Hello, and welcome back to What's Your Story? Every week, I have guests who are authentic that are going to give you insights and actionable plans and information that you can put to work this weekend to improve your lives. Today, we explore a topic called networking, an often misunderstood and, quite honestly, feared concept by many people in business. Today, my guest is Michael Goldberg. Michael is a networking and relationship specialist, a certified speaking professional, educator, author, coach, boxer, and a knockout networker. With two decades of experience in the field, Michael has established himself as a subject matter expert. He'll provide us with insights and advice to raise our personal effectiveness with this business development tool. Michael. I really appreciate your being on the show. Oh, today. I'm thrilled. Thanks, man. You're a celebrity, and I'm happy well, that Charlie, you're here from my Charlie, audience. what I want to know is, what's your story? That's what I want to know. What, what the heck is your story? We'll do that another time, Michael. <laughs> today, you're the, you're, you're, you're the another center of Another fight for another day, my friend. There you go. So, um, in the opening, you heard me mention that it's misunderstood. Some people are fearful of it. Mm -hmm. So, let's define this word networking as you understand it, and what could be some of the causes of the misunderstanding of the concept? I think when people think of the word networking, and it's like networking's been around forever. If they're not thinking about computer networking, the word networking prompts the thought of, you know, I have to go into this whole acting mode. I have to be this networking person with a stack of business cards and promote my business and pretend that I like everybody that I meet, that I connect with everybody that I meet, and that I'm all these things that I may or may not be. So in essence, I think the perception and maybe the paradigm is that it's a bit of a charade. But I think from that perspective, it might be a lack of understanding as to what networking is. I mean, it's really about the connection. And if you know how to make connections and you're truly interested in learning about other people, and if you like them, figuring out a way that you might help them stay in touch, I find that those awesome people will help you right back. And if you have fun doing that and you're able to, I have to say it, drop the gloves when you're doing this whole networking thing, it's going to be a lot more fun. And if you're having fun at some, not going to be like that at every event, but if you're having fun at meeting people, a lot of great things are now allowed to happen because you're now allowing for the, you're creating the space to have those things happen. This Learning, is, helping, that's networking. This is a major mind shift for a lot of people, that it's fun. It can be fun, sure. Okay. But sure. They, have to, they have to understand how to execute it. So I'm barraged with webinar notices and all kinds of emails yeah. and blogs about networking, yeah. sign up for a $97 seminar, and right. things of that nature. I don't know what to believe. Okay. And I'm sure a lot of people in our audience don't know what to right, believe. Right, right. So what makes your approach different? Well, first, what does barraged mean? I get, no, I'm kidding. So, uh, <laughs> so my approach, I think that's different, other than I use boxing gloves and all that, is my brand is knockout networking. Uh, and, and the kind of, I mean, I'm a boxer, I'm a competitive fighter, I do some amateur stuff and it's really cool and it's worked in my brand. Uh, but metaphorically, to give it value in meeting, boxing like networking is about the connection. And I teach typically sales producers in the financial services space, might be advisors, brokers, although we do some real estate and private equity stuff, you know, how to make more and better connections. I think what makes my approach perhaps a little bit more distinctive and different than other approaches, because networking is networking, is that I've got hard, actionable ideas in terms of this is how you do it. Like if you are serious and you know what you want, I have actionable, hard ideas that you can put in place immediately about where you need to go, what you need to say, and with whom you need to say it. And if you can put that one, two, three punch together in terms of, well, I'm looking for this type of business, or I'm looking to land this type of job, or meet these type of people, let's see, like, do, 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 what, what places do I need to go? What is it that I need to say to make that mm -hmm. happen, and then with whom do I need to meet? It's really tactical. It's not just go to an event and hand out a business card. It's, it's, it's more to it than that. And then that's only the part when you're at the event. That doesn't even count what you're doing pre-event, what you're doing post-event, and how you're actually staying in touch with people. Like that's when the work starts, and that's when the relationship building begins. So most people would say that networking is for extroverts. What about introverts? Yeah, I think I think only extroverts would say that, though, Charlie. I <laughs> okay, well, yeah. 
<laughs> Listen, you're an extroverted yeah, kind of a guy. I, I am. I so am. it may come easy for you, but yeah. other people out there, it's like eating glass. Yeah. They are not of comfortable course, with it. Of course. And, you know, I'll, and I'll be honest, um, I am an extrovert, but I, I am a situational extrovert. I am not always shaking hands, kissing babies, Mr. Gregarious guy. So let me just put that out there. If I'm in an event or in a setting that I don't like, I'm not comfortable with, or people don't know what they're doing and it's adversarial, that's not necessarily my place unless I could be, you know, create a platform to help that. So I'm not saying that I'm a one size fits all. So I want to put anybody that might be on the introverted side at ease is that I don't work a room that easily. It's got to be the right room, where to go, what to say with whom. But I find that those that are extrovert, it doesn't necessarily make them a good networker. It helps. Right. It makes the, I go to an event and the party aspect, the social aspect of it may be easier, easier. But if you're a gregarious, outgoing person and all you're doing is talking about yourself, you're not allowing other people to weigh in with whatever, boxing reference, to weigh in with whatever it is that they're going to say, then your extroversion is creating an obstacle and it doesn't make you a great networker. So I find, in general, those that are good networkers that happen to be extrovert, they're extroverted, they're good at expressing themselves, they're good at connecting, and they're also good at listening. But those that are introverts, doesn't mean that you can't be a good networker, it just means you network differently. So maybe you're not that one shaking hands, kissing babies, and working the room, which is not always a good thing anyway, it's true. but you might right. be a lot more effective at asking great questions, being introspective, being a bit analytical, and listening, and then having a process to follow up and make this whole networking thing happen. Later on, we're gonna talk about some of the programs that you put together to give people that structure yeah. that gives them the confidence to be able to get outside of themselves, Absolutely. extend the hand, and start a conversation. Sure. So we need to take a break right now. Okay. When we come back, the audience is gonna be interested in maybe a couple stories that you may have uh, that demonstrate the effectiveness of networking. All we'll right. be right back. A few words from our sponsors. Thank you. Is your business growing and now you need a new and bigger building? Has your organization outgrown their facility and now it's time to expand? Do your hobbies require the need for more space? If you're paying rent, but now you want the advantages of owning, the prospect of financing, construction, and on-time completion may seem out of your reach. General Steel Corporation has the answer. A pre-engineered steel building from the General will not only look great and satisfy almost any need, but you'll save time and money. Our team will help you create your building and deliver it to your location. We offer design services to help you present your concept to board members, bankers, or for fundraising. And the General can even help with financing. General Steel is a name you know, with quality backed by a 50-year structural warranty. Call today and find out how easy it is to have the building you want. You may even save up to $20,000 with rebates. If you need space, you need the general. Seniors want peace of mind and a free prescription discount card? Keep listening. Are you age 85 or younger? Here's an important message to you and all seniors from Final Expense Direct Insurance Services. The average funeral now costs over $7,000, and the most government benefits will pay your family is only $255. Our senior plans start as low as $1 per day and will pay up to $30,000 for funeral and other final expenses. There's no medical exam, and you'll have lifetime coverage. Plus, your rates will never increase, and your plan cannot be canceled as long as you make your premium payments. Get your free information about our senior plans. Just answer a few simple questions and get approved right over the phone. Plus, call right now and you'll receive a free prescription discount card. Call 855-223-7661. That's 855-223-7661. 855-223-7661. Welcome back to What's Your Story? My guest today, Michael Goldberg, a subject matter expert around the topic of networking in a professional setting. And in the first segment, Michael gave us definitions for networking, but now I'd like to have you share a story that will demonstrate to the audience how networking can improve their performance. Right, well, networking is, again, it's about learning and helping, that if you're focused on meeting the right people, going to the right places, saying the right things, and your focus is learning with the prospect of potentially helping them, on a good day, they might just help you right back. And maybe not right at the moment, but that's kind of the way it's supposed to work. And so it's we're gonna focus on the long term. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's really gotta be a, with a long term 
vision in mind. It's really okay. that because it's a process. You know, the the net people view. We spoke about the you know the um, uh, you know the, the concept of networking, that word, and the perception of it is that people look at that as I go to the event and then it's over with and it's done, right? So that's a very short, myopic way of looking at it, but it is a process. It is a pre and a post and a staying in touch sort of feel, and that's you know, where you're building relationships and all those different things, and great networkers tend to know that. So the story you'd like to share with us that sort of demonstrates that in action. I guess, and what's my story? So a story comes to mind in terms of one of my clients, and, and, and most of my clients are in the financial services or private equity, or some hedge fund space, insurance companies, that's really where my specialty is. Uh, and I remember on one occasion, so there's this private equity firm that embraces a lot of my ideas and my materials, and I do ongoing trainings and coachings and all this stuff. And I remember uh, about a year ago going to a conference with them. Ironically, it was the conference that I met them at, and, and of all places, um, it, it's a conference that's in the produce industry. And just on a goof, I happen to have spoken there a couple of years ago. I connected with this private equity firm. And their bent is that they do a lot of work in that space, a lot of private equity, and we provide funding in this particular space, right? So that's where their origination or business development tends to come from. So I'm on the floor of this conference. I'm not speaking at this particular one because I'm there with them and, in a sense, on their behalf. And it's really networking at the moment. So I'm watching them go to different vendors and exhibitors that are here. And their whole deal is that they want to understand about different companies so they can potentially provide funding. So imagine being an exhibitor and all you want to do is just distribute your apples. All I want to do is sell apples. That's it. I just want like Real DJs simple. or Real Costco simple. to just pick up my apple line. And we're talking like million dollar companies. I don't mean like the apple stand. I mean, I want BJs to pick up this line. Of, that's what these guys are on, you know, very high level. But imagine having a private equity guy come over and say, well, on a good day, maybe we can you know, fund your company by a you know, one third margin and all this sort of thing. So who wants to exhibit their product and hear that? So mm -hmm. I've coached these private equity guys to right, listen. Right there on the floor? Right there. And they, they already know this. This is now at the moment implement. And I'm listening and watching and giving them feedback. So they're going going up to these exhibitors and using my ideas in terms of learning, helping, build a relationship, because these guys are not there to network, they're there to sell their stuff, bottom line, and they're paying a lot of money to be there too, so they're paying for their real estate. So this young buck guy that I'm coaching, no joke, I'm at this, this, this apple stand, uh, literally eating an apple, you know, and he goes up to a tomato vendor and starts to pitch his wares in terms of investments and um, and, and, and index reports and all these different things. And this guy that he's talking to, no joke, is about 80 years old. And all he wants to do is sell his tomatoes. Look, I just want to sell my tomatoes. And he's, he's 80 years, so that's all he knows is he was a farmer, grew tomatoes, and he just put this young buck in his place. Like, Sonny, not for nothing, but you're not gonna take over my company. I've been selling tomatoes longer than you and your dad have been, I just laid into him. Whoa. So this young guy comes right over to me, I'm in earshot, I listen, I watch, all this stuff going on, it comes over to me and he said, what did I do wrong? I'm eating this apple, like, and I, well, learning helping. Well, when was that gonna come into the equation? And uh -huh. he said, oh, I went index report, I didn't go learning helping, build a relationship. So they were at different frequencies and if you're at different frequencies, networking, connecting, it's never going to happen. You've got to be on the same or a similar page or be able to invest the time to get on that similar page. So what I'm hearing you say is he was focused on selling something rather than building a relationship Agreed. that yeah. could eventually lead to selling no something. No doubt about it. Excellent. Yeah. You didn't get to this <laughs> spot in your life with this <laughs> level of expertise <laughs> accidentally. So would you share with the audience your journey? How'd you get here? How did I get here? It was a lot of eating of apples, let me tell you. but. Um, <laughs> So I guess the short story is, is that I've got almost 20 years in the hospitality industry. So I was running restaurants all over the place and ultimately I was opening restaurants for the company that I was working with and creating opening teams and all these different things. Uh, and I ended up in basically the top region. So that gave me a lot of visibility. Uh, I always wanted to get involved in training. It didn't formally work out for me. So through networking, I connected with a small office supply company that most people never heard of called Staples. And, 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 and so I had a you know, pretty cool role with that. And through networking, ended up getting promoted and ended up putting some systems in place in Staples. And, and not in the stores, but in their distribution channels. And those systems are still there. 
I ended up getting recruited from Staples to a speaking consulting company and after bringing in more business than the entire sales team combined, single-handedly, um, I decided that, you know, I'm not getting paid enough to do this and I seem to be pretty good at shaking hands, kissing babies, talking to people, bringing business in and I'm having a fun time doing it and oh, the numbers dictate that, maybe it's time to start my own company. So in June of 2000, I did that. So you've been at this almost 20 years? Yeah, I've been at yeah, your, yeah. your own company. Yeah, I've been at this a long time. Who inspired you? <laughs> uh, other than you, Charlie? Uh, I, I, You're already be, on the show. I know, I'm already here, I'm already yeah. here. Okay, so uh, a glove up. So I would say the person, there's lots of people that inspire me, but one person that comes to mind that inspired me to take that, that leap of faith to leave a job where you're getting a salary, yep. where you're producing, and it seems easy and wasn't, but comfortable, um, is I remember playing hooky uh, from, from that job because I wasn't happy there. Like I was doing the work that I liked and, and I was bringing in sales that I liked, but I wasn't getting the thank yous, I wasn't getting the gratitude, and I wasn't getting the paycheck that I thought that I should at that stage. So I played hooky and, and I met a woman named Willow Shire. And I met her because she was on the treadmill next to mine. And this is at 10 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday. And so I'd never met her, and just meeting her now, I'd never seen her before because I'm never at the gym at 10 o'clock on a Thursday like that. And we just struck up a conversation on the treadmill. And she said, you know, you're playing hooky, what's going on? And I kind of told her my story, not to vent, but I told her my story. Not happy in my job, I'm bringing in all this business and blah, blah, blah. And in speaking to her, I realized she's brilliant. She's an absolute brilliant lady. You know, Harvard grad, MIT, runs her own consulting company, and just in a few moments, this woman is just absolutely brilliant. It, there's a reason I'm talking to her. So I share with her that I, I have a dream of opening up my own firm. I'm bringing in all this business. I should be able to do this on my own. And she said, you know, one of my biggest regrets in life is that I did not start my consulting company when I was your age. And that blew me away. She said, that's my one big regret. And I said, yeah, I know, but I've got a salary and I'm looking to get married. All these different things were going on in my life. She said, what's the worst thing that can happen? And I said, I'm not really sure. And then she said, I got a better question for you. Have you ever failed at anything? And I said, well, I guess plenty of things. She said, but anything big, like anything that you really put your mind to, have you ever failed? Like it was hmm. a disaster. And I said, not really. So she said, so why would you think that you would fail at this? And that blew my mind. She said, besides you're young enough where if it doesn't work out, you just go back to do something else anyway. And on that treadmill, she sold me to quit my job and to start my own firm. And I did that just two months later. And she, to this date, and she knows this, is my inspiration. Because had I not met her on that treadmill, this doesn't happen. And did I know I was networking? So the story behind that story is that opportunity knocks. Mm. And if you're not there to answer the bell, yeah, no doubt, it's going to miss you. The other thing was, She's basically telling you something you mentioned in the first segment about structure, yeah. about organization. Mm -hmm. That you can, when you have that in a networking situation, you get a lot accomplished for both yourself and the other party. Absolutely. Yeah. So, have you talked to her lately? I haven't spoken to her lately, but we do stay in touch. You know, social media is a good thing, so she knows where I'm at. Uh, I send her the occasional handwritten card. She's semi-retired now but lives a really good life out on Cape Cod and the whole thing. But she truly was my inspiration. I'm telling you, if I had not met her on that day, you know, we're probably not talking right now. Willow, Michael's clients, thank you. <laughs> Michael, we have to take another break. Our sponsors need to be heard from. But when we come back, I want to learn a little bit about this university that you founded for the benefit of our audience. We'll be right back here on What's Your Story? Everybody wants cheap airfare, but where do you find it? You call low-cost airlines. They specialize in cheap flights, discount hotel rooms, cheap car rental rates, and with the best price guarantee. If you want the lowest prices on your airline tickets or other travel services, call now. That's right, call. That's the only way to get these rates. Experts are standing by 24-7 to get you the cheapest airfare and hotel rates available. So don't wait. Call now. Thousands of people contact General Steel each month for a pre-engineered steel building. Business owners who need office, retail, manufacturing or storage facilities. Leaders who need churches, schools and gymnasiums. They all want the same thing. The advantages of owning. To build quickly and save money. Quality, backed by our 50-year structural warranty. And they all want to work with a name they know. General Steel. Call us today for the building you need and save as much as half the cost and time of conventional construction. 
We're back here at What's Your Story? And we're listening to Michael Goldberg tell us about networking in ways that it can enhance our performance in our professional life. Michael, why do you do this? You get paid, but why do you do this? What's driving you to do this? And I guess you call it your why. Yeah. You know, I ask myself this every day. Why am I doing this? <laughs> your wife, why? Is your wife yeah. saying this too? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so why, why do you do this? You know, but what are you doing is what she says. Is what, yeah, but, um, <laughs> but seriously, what, what's motivating you? Because you're very passionate about this. I am. I am. My why, I know it sounds very... Um, I guess, I don't want to say cheesy, but it just sounds, I think everybody says this, uh, helping people. But the thing that I really love, my why, is I love connecting people. And not just making an introduction, but being able to connect people and help them to make a difference and to see it through. That is my favorite. And with nothing coming to me. So I built a business around this, which of course I get paid and all that stuff. But even just if I meet a job searcher, and in their eyes, I can just see, help me. Like, I, I, I've got a mortgage payment, you know. I, I go out of my way to see who I can connect them with and to create some accountability around what they're doing for free. I'm looking for nothing, but I want to connect the dots for them and I want to have them see it through. So when they land and they end up where they're looking to be, I can say, you know what, I might have had a little hand in that. There is nothing that gets me more excited than being able to not just make a connection, but be able to see that through. And I'd be able to, I was able to, lucky enough to create a company that, that allows me to do that, to be able to work with private equity people and actually watch it happen or have somebody get life insurance because a financial advisor knew where to go, what to say, and with whom. And because they got life insurance, something bad happened in their life, but they were protected. Like to me, that's a connection, seeing it through and being able to make that difference. And I get to see that. That's wow. why I do what I do. Very fulfilling. Oh. So professionally, what is an ideal client for you? My audience may know people that could benefit from you. So what, what's an ideal client? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Thank you. So I have a niche within insurance, financial services, private equity, which I've mentioned, uh, hedge funds, property and casualty, life insurance, mutual fund companies, annuities. So take this whole big, broad industry called financial services, and that's really where I do most of my work, and I, I would think my best work, because I know that industry really well. I've become a bit of a subject matter expert in that industry and how to make connections there. And one of the reasons why that's my target industry, other than they have the resources to be able to bring somebody like me in, is because if they don't know how to make more and better connections, they're going to lose that fight, as in they're not going to be a successful financial advisor or even be one. You know, there's only an 11% retention rate. So when you think about it, one of 10 financial advisors fails. Wow. I'm on a campaign to be able to raise that number, not the failure rate, but the retention rate. And if I could bring it to 30, 40%, and that happens in the firms that I'm supporting and working with, because you know, if you're a good recruiter and you're recruiting the right people for the right reasons, there's networking in that as well. So that's my niche market, although I do get hired by technology companies and colleges and universities sometimes hire me and, and some other industries as well. But really my bread and butter is really the financial space. But what I appreciate is, is that your definition is rather broad. It just isn't going to an event collecting a card. It's mm. how it really weaves its way through business practices. Yeah, it's a process. Yeah, okay. that's really what it is. There's a whole process. You wrote this book. Mm. Let me put it here. Knockout Networking. That's a labor of love. How long did it take you to do that? <laughs> three months. Three months? Three months. Wow. It took me three months to write, but it took me... Uh, <laughs> It took me 11 years to conceptualize. So that's the answer, 11 years. Yeah, okay. so it took me that long to think, like, I, I've got a book. You know, but the actual writing, because I had it here, the writing part was easy, but the, conceptual, the, the conceptualization, the learning, the experiences, the lessons that I got, that took some time. So now you have something called Knockout University. Yeah. Share that with the audience. Very, Tell us about very that. Very excited about Knockout Networking University. So I'm a, I'm a professor at Rutgers University. So I do have an academic thread to what I do. And I thought that, you know, not everybody has the resources to be able to bring me in, let's say, to coach their team or to train their team. So I created a platform called Knockout Networking University, and there's a course on there specifically. I love this course. It's called Networking Fight Club, or just simply Fight Club. 
the brand, as in we don't talk about Fight Club, but in <laughs> Fight Club we do talk about networking. networking right. And it's an online program that has a cadre of videos, 24, they're only eight to 10 minutes each, so you can actually access it on your phone. It's literally, I'm in a ring, I'm in a suit and tie and everything, but I'm at Gleason's gym, mecca of boxing sort of thing, professionally done, not on my phone, production crew and the whole thing, but I teach all of my networking concepts and I do it in eight to 10 minutes, sliced and dice with an application to it. Like this is how you do it. And then there's a PDF that you can uh, use for that. And everybody that's in my fight club at the end of every month gets to be part of this whole fight club community. And we hang out on a WebEx and they ask questions and we interact and they get to network with one another and I get to network with them and the community will just start to build and build. So you're built, as you said, it's a community. I mean, Where, it's at the beginning stages, but it's a community that's it's gaining momentum. But yeah. it's, the common thread is networking. Absolutely. So the people that come there not only are learning more about networking and sharing their experience with others, yeah. but they're really building their We're network. walking the talk. Now it's, yeah. With like-minded people. Mm -hmm. that's, that's it. That's pretty powerful yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's powerful. They get to spar right there and learn from one another, and I know them all. So I can say, you know, Charlie, why don't you tell Tim how your experience about, and, and that happens. You're, this, you're like the hub of the wheel here. Well, everything that's, revolves that's the, around you. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, but the platform is we're launching it, and it's really it's a it's a fun fun start. In my opening, I mentioned that you're also a speaker and a a CSP, which is a very coveted uh, designation. Yeah. So thank you. yeah, talk a little bit about your speaking, what you talk on, where you're going to talk next. Yeah. So CSP is a designation. A lot of my clients in financial services think it's a financial designation. I don't tell them it's not. But CSP stands for Certified Speaking Professional. I usually come up with some sort of insurance product, but Certified Speaking Professional. Uh, and that just means that I, 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 I reached a certain status in terms of my ability to speak, the ROI, the return on investment that my clients are realizing based upon my speaking. And then, of course, there's a financial component to it as well. So right. all that feeds into that. Uh, so a lot of, like my jab in my business is really the speaking. It's the most fun thing to do, but everything else that I'm doing really is, every, in boxing everything's off the jab, well my business everything is off the talk. Whether people want to get involved in the Knockout Networking University, or they want group coaching, or they want to license my program, companies license my program. So all of that starts off with, wow, good speaker, good message, these are ideas that are hard and actionable that we can put into place, how do we get more? So I've got um, a couple of things in New York uh, coming up next week. I'm in London after that. So it's planes, trains, and automobiles for sure. So. Michael, you had uh, mentioned to me at the beginning of the show that you had something to offer the audience for tuning in today. Yeah. So would you look into the camera and share with them what you like to do for them? Yeah, so look into the camera. Look into, where's the camera? Look into my eyes. Is, so Knockout Networking University uh, is an online program, and either companies can license it or individually you could subscribe to it. So it, normally the subscription is $24.95, and I know this is a time-driven thing, uh, but if you happen to be catching either this now live or it's a film clip on some other day, I am happy to offer you the opportunity to subscribe to Knockout Network with a 20% discount. So for only $19.95 a month, you can have access to all that content and access to me. And if you want to learn more about how to access me, I mean, you can just press the buttons. You'll, you'll definitely find me. Otherwise, I'm not a very good networker, am I? Or you can just go to dubsknockoutnetworking.com, press the buttons, and you can track me down. Michael, I want to thank you on behalf of the audience for shedding new light on this and maybe easing people into this process of networking to grow their network, to build business relationships that matter for the future. Thank you so much for coming thank on Thank you. Show. I appreciate it. And to my audience, thank you for tuning in. I have always promised you authentic people to tell it like it is with insights that you can put into use this weekend. So go off, find somebody, network with somebody you don't know, and reap the rewards. Until next week, this is Charlie Timmons wishing you a great weekend.